بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فهذا اعتقاد الفرقة الناجية المنصورة إلى قيام ساعة أهل السنة والجماعة وهو الإيمان بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله والبعث بعد الموت والإيمان بالقدر خيره وشره ومن الإيمان بالله الإيمان بما وصف به نفسه في كتابه العزيز وبما وصفه به رسوله محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم من غير تحريف ولا تعطيل ومن غير تكييف ولا تمثيل بل أسبوك <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوهيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد close your books بارك الله فيكم and your notepads and everything Last week we took that from the Iman, Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah regarding the Iman of Allah's names and attributes. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they believe what? Pass the mic around as far as it reaches because those listening online can hear the answers. Fawwal, does it reach that far? Yalla bi surah, ikhwan, we need to move quick. Does it reach? Well, come forward a bit. No. Don't pull it. Don't. That's it. That's it. I think. Hold on. Yes. Fadl. What man? What? Again. Again. And we nasif nasif Allah subhanahu wa taala bima wasaf bihi nafsuhu wa bima wasaf bihi nabiyhu. So we affirmed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his name and attributes what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself and what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has affirmed. Does anybody want to elaborate a bit more on that or is that sufficient? Fadl. Affirm, aywa. What else? Min ghayri tahreefin wa la ta'atil wa min ghayri tamthilin wa la takhif. Okay, <clears throat> so these were the next questions I was about to come. So Alhamdulillah, you mentioned four things. So we believe and we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is he affirmed for himself and his messenger without doing the following four things. So <clears throat> what is tahrif? What is tahrif? Can't hear. But leave it. Leave it on. Aiba, fadl. It's to distort uh, the names and attributes, uh, whether it's by adding to it or subtracting it or changing the meaning. Okay, changing meaning. Distort. I was about to say, what's another meaning? Okay, what is ta'til? Anybody? Aiba. So these are the things that we do not do regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. So he's mentioned the first one, tahrif, ta'til. Ta'til is to um, deny the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either outrightly deny or partially deny. Or partially, okay. What is takyif? Takyif. Fadl. Takif is to um, say the, how the, the attribute of the name is. I try to give you an essence and a reality. Okay, Hassant. What is tamthil? What tashbi? 
تشبيه تمثيل فضل أن تمثل لله عز وجل كما أن تمثل لله عز وجل كأن كمخلوق كمخلوق is to likening Allah سبحانه وتعالى to his creation or resembling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. So it is extremely important that you know these four things because this is what Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah they do not do regarding Allah's names and attributes. So the first portion was that we affirm what Allah affirms for himself and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has affirmed for Allah without doing the following four things that we have mentioned. Now I'll give you an example of how important it is to understand these four different things. Remember Sheikh Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, we mentioned in last week's lesson. He gave the difference between taharif and wata'atil. And regarding the one that does taharif is muharrif. The one that does taharif is muharrif. And the one that falls into ta'atil, the action of that is mu'attal. So, what is the difference between the both? We mentioned last week regarding taharif, muharrif, and mu'attal. He mentioned that there was a difference between two of them. And he said, not every something is not the other. But every such and such is the other. Who can elaborate upon that? Fadl. Taharif huwa nafil al-ma'ana sahih al-ladhi dallat alayhi nusus. So let me let me translate. So you're saying that taharif it is to change the correct meaning. Yes. No, to deny the correct meaning. Taharif. 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 To deny the correct meaning, which is taken from the um, from the to Quran distort. Sunnah. No, and then change it. And change it with an incorrect meaning. So the one who changed the meaning, they. Deny the, the correct meaning and they replace it with a incorrect meaning. Incorrect basically. meaning. That's yeah. regarding muharrif. That's tahrif. Okay. And ta'atil is the one who negates it, but they do not replace the meaning with an incorrect meaning. They just negate it. Ahsant. So which one is? The tah- muharrif is a mu'attil. Mu'attil. So a every muharrif is a mu'attil. And not every mu'attil is a muharrif. Muharrif. Yeah. Does that make sense? Who can repeat that? Why? 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 Why is it? Why are they not the same? Does that make sense? Fadl Ahmed. Huh? To deny, you're saying, the meaning, or to change the meaning, you're actually rejecting. So, are you? To distort is that you change it and you bring another meaning in place of it. And ta'adil is to outright deny. So the muharrif, he will automatically fall into ta'adil, to deny, because he's changing the meaning. Is that understood? Okay, what else did we take? Okay, today, inshallah, <clears throat> we'll start today's lesson. Barakallahu feekum hakadha. Alhamdulillah. Keep up the good work by making muraja'ah. Oh, sorry. One more question before we do start. What does tawqif mean? Tawqifiya. La la ghayruk. Just you two, I want some others. Aywa, what does it mean? Tawqif, we're talking about Tawqif, what does Tawqif mean? When we say this is Al-Amr Tawqifiyya, that this affair is something Tawqifiyya, what does it mean? Aywa? That the information regarding the description of Allah's names and His attributes is taken from the Quran and the Sunnah and add, and I need something else. And there is no room for intellectual reasoning. So Tawqifiyya is something which is wahi, which is revelation. 
There is no room for our intellect to say, no, it can mean this or that. So that is what tawqifiyah is. Okay, now we're going to continue with Sheikh Fawzan's <coughs> explanation. With the wording, بَلْ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ Regarding Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah, they believe in regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ so, Sheikh Fawzan says that the believers, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, regarding Allah's names and attributes, they believe according to the following verse. There is nothing like unto him, and he is the all-hearing, all-seeing. So to Shu'ra verse 11. So Sheikh Fawzan, he says regarding this, <coughs> لما ذكر المصنف رحم الله تعالى أن الواجب هو that when the author he mentioned that what is obligatory regarding the iman with Allah's names and attributes is that we affirm Allah's attributes through the Quran and the Sunnah without distorting, without denying, and without questioning how regarding Allah Subhanahu's attributes. ولا تمثيل and we are not likening them to the creation. بين موقف أهل السنة والجماعة من ذلك. So in that he explained the position of أهل السنة والجماعة regarding the names and the attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And that was done through أنهم يؤمنون بتلك الصفات على المنحج المستقيم. That they believe in regarding Allah's names and attributes with a manhaj, a methodology which is mustaqeem, which is correct and right. فَيُثْبِتُونَهَا عَلَى حَقِيقَتُهَا نَافِينَ عَنْهَا تَمْثِيل So they affirm regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes with haqiqiyya, meaning that they are real, his sifat, they are real, and they negate any form of tashbih or any likening to the creation. And they do not negate and they do not liken. But rather, what is mentioned in the verse, then this is how they affirm. So this is repetitive kalam that we've already taken. But Sheikh Fawzani, then he says, regarding the verse, he quotes the verse, and in that verse is a principle that we derive from it. And the part where he says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like unto him. Rad ala mumathila. That part of the verse, it refutes mumathila. Those who resemble Allah to the creation. So that part of the verse, so you must know exactly the verse and what the verse contains and how it refutes. So when the first part of the verse, Laysa kamithlihi shay'un, there is nothing like unto him, meaning resembling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is refuting those mumathila, those who resemble Allah to the creation. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that He is the all-hearing and the all-seeing, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirming His attributes. So then this is a refutation, a rad ala muattala, those who deny. So Allah affirms, so this part of the verse, it refutes Mu'attala, those individuals that outright deny the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. Because in that verse, when Allah is saying He is the all-hearer and the all-seeing, then that in itself is affirmation of those qualities and those attributes. So this verse now, Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions... دَسْتُورٌ وَاضِحٌ فِي أَسْمَاهِ وَالصِّفَاتِ That this verse, it is a law, a constitution, a rule regarding what أحل السنة والجماعة they take. So that verse in itself is a rule and a law of how we are with the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before we continue to that part, is the how the verse is split into two parts, is that understood clearly? 
ليس كمثله شيء is a refutation against who ممثلة and the affirmation of the um, sifat is a rod against who because they do what they deny and Allah is affirming طيب so the next part فلا ينفون عنه ما وصف به نفسه so they do not deny or negate what Allah has affirmed for Himself so أهل السنة والجماعة what they don't do is that do not, they do not liken. So this is another rule that she's going to come now, what Shaykh Fawzan, he mentions. The reason that the mumathila or mushabbiha, those who liken the sifat, the attributes of Allah to the creation, how do they fall into it? They fall into it by, by a word which is called tanzi. What does tanzi mean? This is another thing that you have to understand what it means. They actually fall into this problem due to the fact of this one particular thing referring to tanzi. They say, Allah Azza wa Jal munazi an hadi ashya. This is how they fall into it. They fall into it by way of tanzi. So tanzi is to free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of any imperfections. Tanzi is to claim or to free Allah for any deficiencies, any imperfections. Allah is above and free of that. This is what Tanzi means. So they go into extreme in regards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Tanzi. They say, so in actuality what they do is, they fall into that which they are fleeing from. They are so cautious of not saying anything wrong regarding Allah. They want to elevate Allah in such a position, a lofty position, that they come up with something which is tanzih, and saying Allah is far and above of what you are saying. So they flee from a particular thing, but not knowing they are falling into it. So they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be compared to the creation. And Allah is above that. So how do they fall into this misguidance? Because they say that if you say that Allah has a hand, then it means that you are resembling Allah's hand to the creation. If you are saying that Allah has a face, the naturality, what you are doing, you are resembling Allah's face to the creation. And Allah is above that. So what are they actually doing? They are the ones that are falling into that which they are claiming to flee from. They are saying that there is no tashbih, there is no resembling. And it's not allowed to resemble. So they say... What I've just mentioned, that we cannot say that Allah has a hand, because if you affirm Allah's hand, you're resembling to the creation. So then what do they fall into? They fall into, number one, they are in actuality resembling Allah to the creation. Not Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the dastur that we have, there is nothing unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing in comparison that can resemble to Allah. So this is what Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah say. So we don't have that problem when we affirm a hand for Allah, and when we affirm a face for Allah, we don't have that shubha or that doubt that it is like resembling to the creation. But they don't utilize this dastur, this law and constitution when it comes to the names and the attributes. So what do they do? They fall into that which they are trying to flee from without them even realizing. So this is why they fall into something which is they fall into denying outright Allah's names and attributes due to this thing of tanzir. Is that understood, brothers and sisters? Clear? Clear? Repeat it then. <laughs> Repeat. And them likening to the creation, are they doing it deliberately or what, what, what is their intent? The intent is not to liken to the creation. So in trying not to liken to the creation, they are falling into what they are obviously trying to get away from. Hassan. And that word which they are doing is tanzir. 
because they want to free Allah of all imperfections. But they do not realize that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when we say that Allah, when we affirm, it is not attributing any deficiency or imperfections to Allah at all. But rather we affirm what Allah has affirmed. But what they do is, they, they, they attribute that to imperfections to Allah. And that is not allowed for them. So then what do they do? They outright deny it. So, Shaykh Fawzad, he mentions, فَأَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعِ يَقُولُونَ أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعِ They say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, they are khas, they are specific to what is befitting to Allah. And the attributes of the creation, they are specific to what is befitting to the creation. وَلَا تُشَابِ بَيْنَ صِفَاتِ الْخَالِقِ وَصِفَاتِ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ And there is no resembling from the attributes of the Creator to the attributes of the creation. فَلَا يَلْزِمْ هَذَا الْمَحَضُورِ أَلَّذِي ذَكَرْتُمْ عَيُّ الْمُعَطَّلَةِ So, Sheikh Fawzan, he says, So, O you Mu'attala, addressing the people that do this, that there, there is, is, not, is not binding upon us this danger and this error that you are mentioning. So that is what Shaykh Fawzan Hafizullah Ta'ala has mentioned regarding that. So we have covered regarding the verse. It is a, a constitution and a law for Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in regarding the names and attributes. And the verse is split into two. And we've already mentioned that. And we've talked about Tanzir. So these are the bullet points that you have to have in your notes. Inshallah, <clears throat> into her kalam Shaykh Fawzan Hafizullah Ta'ala. Now we move on to another book. There is another book which I'm introducing. Tambihat al-Saniya al-Aqidat al-Wasatiya. Very, very, mashallah, good points in this book, alhamdulillah. <coughs> and that is by Abdul Aziz and Nasir Rashid. Some of Ahlul Ilm say this is one of the best explanations regarding <coughs> al-Aqidat al-Wasatiya. Page 23. Regarding the statement. بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ أَوْ وَصَفَ بِهِ رَسُولُهُ That we affirm for Allah what He has affirmed for Himself or what His Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has affirmed. Then He says in regarding this إِثْبَاتٌ أَنَّ صِفَاتَهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَ إِنَّمَا تَتَلَقَّى مِنْ سَمْعَ وَلَا بِأَرَاءِ الْخَلْقِ He said that we affirm the attributes of the exalted and the Most High by way of Sama'. A Sama' here is referring to texts from the Quran and the Sunnah. La bi ara al khalq. Not by the opinions of the creation, meaning of mankind. So, opinions of mankind, there is no room for it when it comes to the affirmation of affirming the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَصِفَاتِهُ سُبْحَانُهُ مَبْنِيَةٌ عَلَى التَّوْقِيفِ Because the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the Most High and the Exalted, is مَبْنِيَةٌ That it is built upon, the foundation that it is built upon is توقيف, as we mentioned, توقيف here. فَلَا يُوسِفُ إِلَّا بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ so therefore, we do not describe Allah except that which He has described Himself with or that which His Messenger وسلم, has described Himself. So He starts off with that. Number two point of this book which I want to mention is the statement of Imam Ahmad. So now, the statement of Imam Ahmad regarding the names and attributes of Allah. Imam Ahmad, he says, لا يوسف الله إلا بما وصف به نفسه أو وصف به رسوله لا يتجاوز القرآن والحديث. Once again, very very similar that we do not describe Allah except with that which He has described Himself or what His Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has described Him with. لا يتجاوز القرآن والحديث. And we do not go beyond the Quran and the Sunnah, meaning Hadith, meaning the description is found in the Quran and the Hadith. Point three in this book, another fa'idah. And these, by the way, are all principles. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, 
Rahimullah, he mentions this in his book, Tadrumiya. And he mentions a very beautiful um, principle, qaida. Allah's attributes are like his essence. So he says, Qawlu fi sifat ka qawli fi dhat. فَكَمَا أَنَّنَا نَثْبُتُ اللَّهِ نَثْبُتُ لِلَّهِ ذَاتًا لَا تُشَبِّهُ الذَّوَاتِ فَيَجِبُ أَنْ نُثْبِتَ لَهُ صِفَاتًا لَا تُشَبِّ الصِّفَاتِ فَالصِّفَاتِ فَرْعُ الذَّاتِ يُحَذِّ فِيهَا حُذُوهَا A principle of translation of that that regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes and his, uh, one, his attributes it is like his essence so Allah's attributes are like His essence. We cannot affirm anything about Allah except what Allah has informed us about Himself. So just the same way we cannot talk about Allah, about Allah's essence, then the same way we cannot talk about Allah's attributes except from what He has informed us. Why? Because the sifat, the attributes, are a part of the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They follow in suit. So this is why Al-Imam Ahmed, rahimullah, intaha, that, that's where Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's kalam is finished. This part of, of Imam Ahmed is just a ziyadah, just to clarify that point. When Imam Ahmed, rahimullah, stood firm regarding the Khalq al-Qur'an, the fitna of the Khalq al-Qur'an, the Qur'an being created. He stood by the methodology and the manhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah saying that the kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal was not created. It was not created. And this is from the principles of why he was on that mawqif. That Allah's speech and all, that there is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he follows in suit regarding his essence. So just as we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, then all what comes from him is not created, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is not created. It is a part of Allah's essence. So this is why Shaykh, uh, this is why, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he gives this little principle for us to understand. That Allah's attributes are like His essence. Is that understood? Qawl fi sifat ka qawl fi dhat. Al qawl. Al qawl fi sifat ka qawl fi dhat. And if you want the rest of the bit, then come after the lesson, inshallah. <laughs> Is that understood? So all of Allah's sifat, his attributes, they obviously stem from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence. So it's a part of Allah's essence. Just as we cannot talk, anyone can talk about Allah's essence without any delil from Quran or the sunnah, it's the same way with his attributes. Okay. In the same book, he brings a statement <clears throat> of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. And... Before I mention it, it is also a question that we can derive from this. So you can put this as a question, as a chapter heading, and then we'll explain. Man huwa ashar? Who is more severe? Muattala or mushrikeen? Who is more severe in their evil and in their wrong? Muattala or Mushrikeen? Does everybody have an idea before we go in? What is the Muattala? Is, is, these definitions is extremely important that we know. What is the Muattala? Huh? Denies and negates Allah's names and attributes. Mushrikeen? Ma'roof. So think In this The question is here Who is more evil and wrong? Mu'attala You say Mu'attala 
Ahmad Muatala. Okay. Let's see what Ibn al Qayyim he says. Attaqtil Sharrun min al Shirk. That to deny and negate is more severe in wrong or more severe in evil. Min al Shirk than Shirk. And these are the following reasons. فإن المعطل جاهد لذات أو لكمالها المعطلة they negate or they deny or they disbelieve in regarding the essence or regarding كمالها and how complete free of deficiency the essence of Allah is so in essence جاهد لحقيقة العلوهية so then he himself then denies and disbelieves in the true essence of worship. Because he, the Mu'attala necessitates the following. What they do, the outcome of that is, فَإِنَّ ذَاتًا لَا تَسْمَعْ So they say there is an essence that does not hear, there is an essence that does not see, does not become angry, does not become pleased. It is something that doesn't do anything. Due to the fact of what they do. In, this is what it necessitates. So it is not within the dominion and is not without the dominion. And it is not connected or disconnected to this world. Not up and not down. So, due to the fact that they have denied, or they have said that this essence, it, does, it is, is the essence that doesn't hear, see, does not have any attributes. So they say it is nowhere. It is, it is nothing, basically. أَمَّا mushrik, As for the mushrik, مُقِرٌ billah, He affirms the existence and the essence of Allah, the mushrik. وَلَكِنْ عَبَدَ مَعْهُ غَيْرُ But, Alongside worshipping Allah, he worships others than Allah. But he still affirms. As for the Mu'attala, the resort, what they've resorted is that they don't, they don't even acknowledge the existence. Which is far worse than the Mushrikeen. Because the Mushrik, he at least affirms Allah as a creator. And he affirms Allah's essence. But he worships alongside Allah others. Is that clear? Who? The Mu'attala. Mu'attala, yeah. No. Due to what they fall into, they actually say that there is a Lord, whatever. But by them falling into, um, not using the correct principles, it necessitates that there's nothing. Because they've denied. There is partial denial as well, like for example, the Ashara, the, the Ashara, they affirm seven, but we'll come on to that inshallah. Is that understood? Why the Mu'attala are far severe than the Mushrikeen? Why does everybody look at me like. Um, no, the Mu'attala, what they fall into is they, they affirm. The ma'na, or oh sorry, the, the negate the ma'na, the negate the attributes. So by them negating, then there's nothing left for them. They, they, they said there's an essence that doesn't see. There's an essence that doesn't hear. He doesn't have any attributes. He's, they, 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 there's no essence that they affirm. He's nowhere. There's different levels, but this is just umum al-kalam. We're going to get into that. Is that understood? Who stay, who's this, whose statement was this? Ibn al Qayyim. Okay. <clears throat> now we move on to. Sheikh Uthayyameen. <clears throat> 
symmetrical theamine brings <coughs> three different principles and we'll chapter head all of them. First one is Asma'illah wa sifatu tawqifiyah. We've already taken that tawqifiyah and that is basically all of Allah's names and attributes, they are tawqifiyah. So affirming and negating has to come by way of Quran and the Sunnah. And it is not permissible to affirm or negate anything other than the Quran and the Sunnah. There is no room for intellectual reasoning in that regard. The next one he starts with Asma Allah wa Sifatihi Al Fil Muhkam O Min Mutashabah. Following trans- rough translation regarding the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah. Hal hiya min al muhkam. Muhkam are the clear cut verses on the clear cut proofs. Mutashabiha, which are unclear. So this is a question. So the names and the attributes of Allah, do they fall into the category of clear? Or do they fall into the category which is unclear? And muhkam and mutashabih, clear and unclear is referring to the Quran and the Sunnah. The proofs of the Quran and the Sunnah that are derived from the Quran and the Sunnah regarding Allah's names and attributes. So he answers the question by saying, Asma Allah wa sifati min al muhkam fi ma'naha. Regarding Allah's na- regarding the meaning, regarding the meaning of Allah's names and attributes, then they are from the muhkam, which are clear. Liana ma'naha ma'loom. Because the apparent meaning is clear. So, uh, so when it pertains to when it is clear, it's regarding the meaning. Because the meaning is apparent in clear Arabic, so it's clear. And it becomes unclear. But regarding its haqiqah, how it is, then that is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So regarding Allah's names and attributes, how they actually are, then that falls into the unclear because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. But by way of meaning, like al-basir, al-sami' then that is clear the meaning, what it, what it entails. The next one, Ismallah غير محصورة بعدد المعنى أي ومعنى إحصائها that regarding the names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى they cannot be enumerated they cannot be enumerated meaning they cannot be counted so before we before we alhamdulillah elaborate on what Sheikh Uthiyya mean he says it's always good to, alhamdulillah, give an example and we go into the kalam of the shaykh. There is a hadith that mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, afwan, a hadith that mentions that inna lillahi tis'atun wa tis'ina isman, that very Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. And whoever memorizes them, he will enter paradise. Tayyib. So we have Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah saying that the names of Allah cannot be enumerated. They cannot be counted. And then we have a clear hadith to say whoever Allah has 99 names and whoever memorizes them will enter paradise. So is this ta'arud? Does this have like an apparent contradiction? Everyone shaking their head no, mashallah. So aywa. Mike, whoever's going to speak on the mic, so those who are listening can... Yalla, who's going to speak? There you are. Give it to him. You, you've got, you had your head up first and your hand up and now it's gone down. Yalla. We're going to cover it, but it's good to, alhamdulillah, for you to be aware of the mas'ala before we go into it. Sometimes this way, the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa would question his companions, already knowing the answer. So to hear what they would say with them to attend, and then he would come with the answer, and then it would be easier to comprehend and to memorize. Fadl. 
What's the mas'ala? What's the mushkila? Ayuwa, fadl. Um, so What's the mas'ala? The mas'ala is that um, in, a hadith, in, in a hadith, the Messenger of Allah SWT mentioned that Allah has um, 99 names. Okay. Um, and Ahl Sunnah uh, wal Jama'ah believe that we don't do um, uh, ta'addud on Allah's names. Or we don't. There's, There's more names in 99. Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in, the hadith, in the hadith that was that uh, the Messenger of Allah mentioned 99 names. These are not the, uh, the only names that Allah has. But it, it came in this ninety nine names came in this narration. But Allah has more names. Allah has more names. That, that name that we don't know of. Okay. Remember we said a principle that when it comes to Allah's names and attributes, we only say what's in the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm. So for you to say he has more names, you have to bring proof. What's the proof that Allah has more names than ninety nine? Allahu Alam. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Sheikh Uthayameen, he says that there is a dua that is collected in Sahih uh, Imam Bukhari and Muslim where <clears throat> there is a dua and the dua is long and I strongly recommend all brothers and sisters to go back to the dua. The dua is about someone who is feeling anxiety, sadness, all the attributes of negativity and if they were to say the following supplication then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes, removes that stress and that anxiety and stress feeling and that depression and replaces it with happiness. And that is something, alhamdulillah, that we should all memorize and know. For verily there are times that we do feel like that and alhamdulillah our belief is Sadiq al Mustuk, if he says that Allah will remove these negative qualities and replace it with qualities which are praiseworthy, then alhamdulillah we believe that. So it is a long dua, but in this supplication, there is a part that it mentions, As'aluka Allahumma bi kulli ispin huwa lak. O oh Allah, I ask of you, I beseech you with all of the names that are yours. So may to be nafsak, that you have named yourself. O anzaltahu fi kitabik. O you have revealed it in your book. O alamtahu ahada min khalqik. O you have taught one of your creation. أو استحثرت به في علم الغيب عندك. Oh, you have withheld, with you have withheld these names with the knowledge that you possess or with you that you have. So that portion Sheikh Uthaymin uses as a proof to show that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has more names than ninety nine. But what is the shahid? Who can explain? How is this hadith which I've just read and translated a proof that Allah has more names? How? What? Murad? Yeah, so the one that says that Allah has more names than 99. Yeah, the one that says that Allah has more names than 99. Yeah, the one that says that Allah has more names than 99. Yeah, the one that says that Allah has more names than kept with the knowledge that you possess or you have. So names that are with the knowledge that Allah has kept and not revealed to any of his creation. So this is clear proof that Allah has more names than what has been revealed to us through the Quran and the Sunnah. So not only do we have to memorize, alhamdulillah, uh, the proofs, but we have to know how it is a proof. Is that clear? Clear? So, Sheikh Uthimeen, he says afterwards, وَمَا إِسْتَحْذَرَ اللَّهُ عَزَ وَجَلْ بِعِلْمِهِ فَلَا سَبِيلِ إِلَى حَصْرِهِ وَلْإِحَاطَ بِهِ Sheikh Uthimeen, he says a principle, there is no method of quantifying, meaning knowing the number, or encompassing what Allah has kept with his knowledge. So whatever Allah has kept with his knowledge, then there is no way that we can know. So this is a proof in itself to show that he has more than 99 names. So then we come back to the hadith. So the reconciliation and the gathering between this hadith and the hadith that Allah has 99 names, whoever memorizes them, then the meaning of that hadith is that whoever memorizes 
99 names from all of the names of Allah. Whoever memorizes 99 of them, because the messenger specified 99. So it means if you memorize 90 names of Allah, then you will enter paradise. And that, that does not negate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has other names other than 99. And then an example is given. Uh, for example, a metaphor is given. Uh, so for example, if a person wants to say that I have prepared 50 shields for battle or for war. I have prepared for you, for example, 50 shields. He, there's 50 shields for you for battle. Does that negate now that I have more shields with me? It just specifies that I'm giving 50 for you for this battle. But it doesn't mean automatically. Or for example, um, say one of our children want to go, for example, on a trip. So then I'll say to my child, this is the only example by the way, I don't give this type of money. But if I said, this is 50 pounds for your school trip. This is for you, this is what I've prepared for you or given for you. 50 pounds for your school trip. Does that mean I do not have any other money? Well, in my case, it means, yes, he doesn't have no other money, but, <laughs> but it does not negate that I have other money elsewhere. But it just specifies a number which I am given. So this is the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hadith it mentions 99 names. So the messenger, the murad, the intent here, 99 names. If you memorize any of them, 99 of them, that will suffice you to enter paradise. But alhamdulillah, based upon the other hadith, it shows that Allah has more names than 99. And finally, we'll finish on this note, inshallah, a question and a chapter heading as well at the same time. What does memorize 99 names mean? What does it entail to memorize 99 names? Memorize and to act upon it. Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, معنى إحصاء أسماء الله عز وجل أن يعرف لفظها معناها وتعبد لله عز وجل بمقتضاها which is pretty much alhamdulillah what the brother he said that the intent of memorizing is just not merely that you've memorized it and khalas but is that one knows its wording and its meaning and worships Allah accordingly to what it necessitates so I repeat Memorizing the 90 names of Allah, it entails that one, knowing that one should know its wording. And that would necessitate memorizing it. Knowing his wording, meaning you've memorized it. And its meaning. And then to worship Allah, meaning act upon those names in what these names necessitate. So for example, if Allah... You know that Allah has the name of all seeing, then we know that Allah has the attribute that He sees everything. So then, due to the fact that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears everything, your ibadah is in accordance to that, oh, my Lord is watching me. My Lord is watching, my Lord hears. So it, it, it um, refrains or, or it prevents you from falling into that which is haram because you know that your Lord sees. So this is, you, you know, you memorize the name, then you, remem- you memorize its meaning, what it necessitates, and then afterwards you act upon it as well. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us from them, that memorize and understand and then worship Allah accordingly to what it necessitates. Ameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Anyone that is doing tasmiyah, inshallah, <coughs> we will now listen to those who are memorizing. And other than that, once again, brothers and sisters, make sure every single detail that you have noted, you have jotted down, that you go back and you expand on your notes and you go over your notes. Barakallahu fiku. Ayywa. You want that your word in Qalwa Imam Muhammad is that La Yusuf Allah Azza wa Jal Ima bima wasaf abi nafsahi fi kitabihi aw sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la yatajawaz al Quran wal hadith. But if you want the exact word in Lahaba, huh? That was worded, yeah. Here.
네. 아이고. Any other questions? Take me as in that book. Okay. Whose statement did you want? Okay. A colu fi sifat. Cal coli fi that. Facama annana. Nuthpitu lilla thatan. لا تشبع الذوات فيجب أن نثبت له صفات لا تشبع الصفات. I'll give it to you إن شاء الله. You can copy it down إن شاء الله. Any other questions or clarifications? أيوة. The du'a only read a tiny portion of it. This is long. اللهم إني عبد وابن عبد وابن عمتك. It's very very long. ناصي أنت بيدك. It's long. Huh? It's in not in the portion that I've got, but what page? G give it to me, inshallah, if you can find it in the other book. Khalas. It's Sahih. Fima Alam. Let's see what the reference is. متفقون عليه متفقون عليه تجنا بريشانا ها five minutes let's do let's start to smear quickly then إن شاء الله whoever's doing